latest on September 25th around the wide world of tropics. Here's your tropical weather bulletin. Several tropical cyclones are active around the world, none of them of hurricane strength anymore. Five tropical storm equivalent storms dotted all around the globe right now, three of them in the Atlantic this September 25th. Looking in the Atlantic then, which is the first port of call, day 116, Jerry, Karen and Lorenzo, all tropical storms. The status of Jerry might be under a bit of question though, Lorenzo intensifying nicely. Day 133 in the Eastern Pacific, Kiko is still alive and getting old as it continues to move into the Central Pacific. In the Western Pacific, 91W has formed and Cyclone Hika has made landfall in Oman as a Category 1, peaks as a Category 2 earlier. And no systems are active in the southern hemisphere at this point. It's all quiet here. So, Tropical Storm Karen has winds of 50 miles per hour and a pressure of 1,005 millibars, verified by ASCAP passes earlier today. It's along the eastern tip of Federico at this point, 6 miles from Fajardo on the eastern tip, 18.3 north, 65.7 degrees west. Um, so, Karen delivering tropical storm force winds to the islands, possibly the Virgin Islands as well. It will continue towards the north or north-northeast and will then, well, I think we all know about this, it's going to do some kind of looping motion and begin to travel towards the west. What I can say is that most models have gone off the boil with potential Florida impacts for Karen. Lorenzo looking like this. 65 mile per hour winds, a pressure of 988, which is fairly low because it is a fairly large system. Um, doesn't look that great, certainly not hurricane status, which is what you'd expect for that pressure in the Atlantic. 456 miles from Brava, Cape Verde, 13.1 north, 31.3 west. And over the next few days, we, we do expect it to become a hurricane during the course of Wednesday, and it will strengthen further, probably reaching major hurricane status. Some models have really been ramping up the intensity of Lorenzo as it curbs towards the poles, uh, and it will eventually turn northeast. Um, so that one could be a threat to the Azores long range. We'll wait and see on that. Here's some uh, imagery of Jerry. So, wind shear is actually fairly low over the system at this point. It's high further north, but NHC think the wind shear might have had something to do with the storm weakening. Dry air also another big factor. I reckon looking at this imagery, it's probably more dry air than the wind shear, but I'm sure wind shear has played its part over the last few days to really grind down Jerry. And this is what Lorenzo looks like on the same graphics here. Um, low wind shear environment as well for this storm. Um, it's high towards the northeast and far, far towards the north, but at the moment it's got very good opportunities for intensification here for the next two or three days plus possibly more than that so Lorenzo looking very good and it'll probably create as good a good um, water vapor environment for itself as well you can see how sprawling it is on the right hand side of the wide shot here the North Atlantic Karen's quite visible as well you can also see Jerry looking somewhat poor and a disturbance that's in the Gulf of Mexico um, that one's had a little flare up in the last few hours it might look like there's a bit of rotation but there isn't any I can assure you of that at this moment in time National Hurricane Center giving it a 20% chance in the next five days there it is in the eastern Pacific well, it's a graveyard again. Uh, what's left of Mario is gone. Um, Kiko looks appalling and will almost certainly lose its tropical storm status by the next update, which will be now be reissued by the Central Pacific Hurricane Center, and it's moving into that region now. Um, Hawaii won't get any effects from this storm in all likelihood, and it's looking very quiet elsewhere in the East Pack. In the Western Pacific, Invest 91W is quite clearly located there. It's the only thing in town in the Western Pacific as well. It's been so quiet this year. Um, although I do say that, it's only about six days behind schedule in the Western Pacific so far. I don't think it's just, I think it's just a bit more quiet than what we're used to. But that is an Invest there that could develop into a typhoon later on down the line. Probably not for a little while just yet. The Australia and South Pacific region has a very long line of uh, tropical disturbances there. Um, not really any organization to them, so we can't really call any tropical cyclone activity out of that. And this is what the Indian Ocean is looking like at this point. You can see some imagery there. That was Hikam moving towards land. It made landfall earlier on and some disturbance developing possibly off the western Indian coast as well. Sea surface temperatures, the eastern Pacific really getting very dotty there, around 28 degrees generally, but temperatures really starting to fade out there. Uh, off the coast of Mexico, that's taken a hit as well with those recent storms. The Atlantic 
Atlantic's still looking fairly warm. There is a cool patch where Jerry is. That won't be helping that storm at all either, possibly even below the 26 degree threshold by now. Uh, the Indian Ocean, uh, not too much to talk about here. 28 degrees plus generally. Not much change since Hika. And in the Western Pacific, very warm still. All the way up to the Ryukyu Islands where there is a bit of a cool patch there now after recent cyclones pushed through there as well. Tap up most recently. So this is what Karen is looking like on the uh, Geocolor floater imagery. Um, the it's been fairly disorganized in general, but it is producing tropical storm force winds of 50 miles per hour. That's mainly going to be located to the south and possibly southwest and obviously on the east. Um, so Puerto Rico probably getting the full force of those 50 mile an hour winds. Flash flood warnings in effect. This is tropical storm Lorenzo, much larger, same resolution imagery. So we're looking at the same area of coverage on this. Um, and you can see just how larger it is. It's got a lot about it and huge amounts of cloud cover in association with its big banding towards the east and south. So here we are, September 25th, day 268, 67 storms on the table so far for the year. The next name in the Atlantic will be Melissa in the eastern Pacific, we're looking out for Nada. In the central Pacific it will be Ima. In the western Pacific the next name on the list is Mitag, and in the North Indian Ocean we're looking next on list 8, the next name is Kiar. You can find Force 13's outlets, the website force13.com with the latest, our YouTube page, search Force 13 all in text and subscribe if you haven't so far. And you can find us on Facebook and Twitter, search Force 13 on there as well and you can get through to us on any of those platforms. That's all for now, we'll have another Tropical Weather Bulletin tomorrow. You can also help the project become even better by becoming a patron. You can see more information about all the benefits involved by visiting patreon.com forward slash force 13. With a special thanks to these people for being our most valued patrons this month. You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show force 13's colors wherever you go. You can also find a link to our discord server underneath this video in the description.